Dr. Eberlin, um, how did you discover intelligent design? Well, it was back in 2008. I was preparing my lecture on general chemistry. And then I, I saw this magazine in Brazil. Uh, they published an article in the cover of that magazine. They put a, a picture of Darwin and they were saying, Darwin, the man who killed God. And I got really mad of that. Mm -hmm. And then I went to give that lecture and I was teaching my students about chemistry. But I think the students realized how mad I was that day. And they, they asked me, what is going on? And I, I talked to them about that cover saying, that's not true. This is, this is unfair to say that Darwin killed God. And they were asking me, they were quite surprised. And they were saying, hey, professor, you don't believe in Darwin? Uh, you, <laughs> you believe there is a creator and things like this? I said, yes. And then uh, we had a long discussion. And I, I remember that one of the students asked me, why don't you give you a lecture on that? And I said, okay, next class. <laughs> so I, I only had two days to prepare my lecture on something. And then I went to the internet and I, then I found those crazy guys, <laughs> uh, erratic guys from intelligent design. And I found also a, a guy in Brazil, Enesio Almeida Filho. He, uh, he has a blog on intelligent design. Mm -hmm. And then I sent an email to him and asking, Enesio, I, I'm here at the uh, University of Campinas. I have to give this lecture on something. And I found this intelligent design that you support on your blog. What is that? And he was sending me some information. So I, I got some. I prepared my first lecture and I gave to the students and they, they seemed to like it quite a lot. They were surprised that there were so many evidence for a, a mind behind the life in the universe. And then uh, Enesio got to know about me and there was a symposium at McKenzie's University uh, that would uh, going to be held in two or three months. And he invited me to come and said, why don't you come to this? And said, oh, to give a lecture? He said, no, to participate in the final debate. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy <laughs> because it was my first ever <laughs> defense of intelligent design. And, and it was not to give a lecture, which is easier than yeah, to participate yeah, yeah. in a debate. But I was, I'm, I was crazy enough to say yes. So I came to the dis uh, debate and I was debating evolution and trying to defend intelligent design. Mm -hmm. And then I remember that uh, we were talking about how similar we are genetically to the chimpanzees. Yeah. And the guy was claiming, well, oh, it's only 2% difference. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I, I said, well, that's the uh, Bill Gates effect. And everybody was laughing because I think they, they realized, you know, if you, Bill Gates come, comes and say, oh, 2% of all the money that I have is yours, would you say it's a, too little? Yeah. No, it's 2% of 3.2 billion yes. of uh, base pairs. And then he was talking about this co-option argument from Miller uh, to explain the irreducible complexity city of Michael Behe and then uh, it was my turn and, and I was saying oh that's the MacGyver effect MacGyver, MacGyver you need to have a really smart guy <laughs> <laughs> that can put together parts yeah. that are not intended to do that job to do the job right. so everybody was laughing again and uh, I think I I killed that guy <laughs> with those arguments that I, <laughs> I discovered from nothing, <laughs> just came into my mind. And then I became a little bit famous in Brazil because, you know, I was participating in this debate. I, it went really well. I think everybody was convinced that intelligent design had a strong point. And then uh, I started to be invited to give lectures, to participate in debates in a conference and that's it that's the, how it started excellent